الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى that he grants us tawfiq and success and he keeps us upon the sirat al-mustaqim I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he teaches us that which will benefit us and that he benefits us in that which he teaches us and that he increases us in beneficial knowledge so another session where we are looking at Aqil al-Tadmuriya of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah with the Taqrib al-Tadmuriya from Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah last week we looked at some principles when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now the Shaykh has begun the chapter فِي الزَّائِغِينَ أَنْ سَبِيلُ الرُّسُلُ وَأَسْبَائِهِمْ فِي أَسْمَانِ اللَّهِ وَسِفَاتِهِ Those who have deviated from the path of the Rusul, of the messengers. We talked about that in more detail last week. And the first group that has a zayg, as a deviation that he talked about, were the Mumathina. So we have said previously that there are two main groups and this is what the Shaykh is saying here in his Taqrib Zai'oon and Sabeel and Rusul Those people who have deviated from the path of the messengers are two groups or two qisman, two categories The Mumathila and the Mu'adqila As for the Mumathila, those who liken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the creation or they ask how Either they make takif, they ask how, so Allah has a face, how is his face, and then they get involved with all of that. Or, the worst one, perhaps, is where they say the face of Allah is like the face of the creation, or any kind of attribute is like the attribute of the creation. The way they think about it, and this is what the Shaykh is saying here, is that there are two or three arguments that they bring. The first one is that they have said that this is clear from the Arabic language, face means face. We don't know any other face, therefore the face of Allah must be like the face of the creation. Uh, another thing that they say is that they uh, they say that we are only going with what we understand. Therefore we understand face to mean face. So they've used a linguistic interpretation to come to their understanding, which is another sort of argument that they use. They are two separate, even though they're very similar. They also say, if something of the unseen has been mentioned, because we don't know the unseen, this is a principle that they've created which has no evidence, but this is what they've created. They say, for إِذَا خَاطَبْنَا عَنِ الْغَائِبِ If we have been told about something which is from the unseen, وَجَبَ حَمْلُهُ الْمَعْلُومِ فِي الشَّاهِدِ We must understand it in the way that we can see it. So, for example, for them, the mumathila, a tree, is a tree in Jannah, it must be like a tree, like the trees in the dunya. Why? Because a tree is a tree. The understanding of a tree is a tree. And they have said, well, we have no other thing to compare it to. Otherwise, what they have then said is that this would then mean that there is uh, an interpretation or there are hidden meanings and there are riddles in the kitab and the sunnah, which they have said that this is not acceptable. Therefore, what they have said is, we are going to take it as apparent as we can. And as a side benefit, it's not been mentioned here, some of the Zahiriya actually fell into this, because the Zahiriya is a, is a group where they will take things uh, on its apparent form, and they even said, well, face means face, face is like the face of the creation. How do we respond to this? We looked at this last week, so we don't really need to go into it in any more detail than we did last week. The Sheikh said that this is wrong based on the sum' and the aql and the his. As for the sum' Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sum' is the delete for the kitab and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمْ يَقُلْ لَهُمْ كُفُونَ هَدْ There is nothing like unto Allah. لَيْسَ كِمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Allah is not like anything. Uh, there is nothing that can be compared to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَدْرِبُوا لِلَّهِ الْأَمْثَالِ Do not make parables and comparisons for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the aql, then the shaykh gave us a number of principles in our Intellect, common sense will tell you that what they are saying is wrong. Uh, just because something's got an attribute and something else might have a similar attribute doesn't mean that they are exactly the same. Even within the creation itself, there are people who have different attributes to one another, even though they are similar, but they are not exactly the same. And then the Shaykh says, from the aql also, is that if you're going to make the creator like the creation, then the creator would have uh, the same attributes as the creation. There will be no abudiyah left. There will be nothing left which is particular for the Creator. 
There'll be no tawheed left. As for the his, the Sheikh says, we can tell in our his, meaning our, uh, our senses, our, um, our you know, daily interactions, our fitra, uh, tells us that uh, names and attributes can be tatabayin fil haqiqah. And the Sheikh is going into uh, something which is a little bit more detailed. In the Arabic language, there are things which are mutaradif and there are things which are mutabayin. The Sheikh is saying here, they have the same wording, but they have different uh, realities. And this is exactly what we find in the world that we live in. The face of the earth is not like the face of the clock, which is not like the face of a human, but all of them are faces. So the Sheikh is saying here, in the world that we live in, so now he is not only just talking about the sama, which is the dalil, or the aql, which is our intellect, but he's talking about the hiss, where everyone will understand. Adults, children, animals, humans, everyone understands that these things are different. Therefore, the mumathila, this is a brief response to them. Now we move on to the mu'attila. Like we have said that there are two groups. The mu'attila are different to the mumathila. The mumathila liken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by affirming everything exactly the way it is. The mu'attila are opposite. The mu'attila want to deny everything. Everything is negated. Everything is negated to the point that some of them negated everything. This is what the shaykh says here. Al-Mu'attila وهم الذين أنكروا ما سمى الله تعالى ووصف به نفسه إنكارا كليا أو جزئيا. So the shaykh is saying here the Mu'attila, some of them completely removed everything from the names and attributes of Allah and some of them left some things but they made ta'til of other things. Ta'til is where a person completely denies, where they remove and they completely strip off from something. And this is what the Shaykh is saying here, that the Mu'attila are of different levels. Some of them completely take inkar and kulli and take everything away. And some of them do it partially. Now why is there a difference in this? There is a difference in this because from the Mu'attila you've got different groups. You've got on one side you've got the Khawarij, Along with them, you've got the Jahmiyyah. Along with them, you've got the Mu'tazila. And the Sheikh is going to talk about the Mu'tazila in the next chapter, in a separate chapter by itself. Because they made ta'til, but they made ta'til in a slightly different way that others didn't. So we're going to look at that separately. And then you've got the Mu'at. So these people made inkar and kulli. The Jahmiyyah, they completely stripped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala away from all of his names and attributes. And the Mu'tazila did the same but in a slightly different way. And the Khawarij kind of like followed them in that. They denied many of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then on the other side, you've got the Matrudiyya and before them the Asha'ira and before them the Kullabiyya. Kullabiyya are the main group and from them you had the Asha'ira and the Matrudiyya. And they're all very similar, yet they are very different at the same time. According to us, they're quite similar but they're different within themselves. What the Kullabiyya tried to do is they tried to make Ta'til but not Kulliyin, not completely deny. So what they did is they affirmed certain things and they negated certain things but they said we can't make Ta'til of the Kitab and the Sunnah, you can't deny what is in the Kitab and the Sunnah. So they came with a process of making Ta'wil. And Ta'wil is where they keep the wording but they make inkar of the meaning. So does Allah have a face? No, Allah doesn't have a face. But what does it say in the Quran? It says face in the Quran, but face doesn't mean face. This is known as ta'wil. As for ta'til, jahmiyyah, they don't offer an explanation. They just say, no, we just reject it. The Mu'tazila, we reject it. But they reject it in a different way, as we will see. Okay. So the Shaykh is now talking about the Mu'attila and the ta'if al-ula al-asha'ira wa min ضَهَاهِهِمْ مِنَ الْمَتْرُودِ وَغَيْرِهِمْ So the Shaykh is saying here, and this is what the Shaykh is basically saying here, we've got the first sort of group within the Mu'attila, and they didn't make complete inkar, they made inkar in some things, فَأَثْبَتُوا لِلَّهِ مِنْ صِفَاتِ سَبْعَ صِفَاتِ But they used to affirm other things, الْحَيَاء which is life, ilm, qudra which is ability, al-irada which is will, al-kalam they affirmed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, and the sam'a and the basr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees. This is because they tried to make uh, a fusion between the aql and the naql by partially making ta'adil and partially accepting 
the naql, which is the text. How do we respond to this first group? There are four or five responses that the Sheikh mentions. The first one. أن الرجوع إلى العقل في هذا الباب مخالف لما كان عليه السلف الأمة من السهابة. These people try to affirm the naql, but they only did it which would confirm or conform with the aql. The Shaykh is saying here, this approach is not Salafi. It's against the way of the Salaf al-Sari. And then he gives us an example from the statement of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. Rahimahullah. Nasifu Allah. We give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attribute. Bima wasafa bihi nafsu. As he has attributed himself. Wala nata'adni al-Quran wal-Hadith. And we do not transgress against the Quran and the Hadith. So the Shaykh is saying here, this is now proof to say that this is not the methodology of the Salaf. That's one response. A second response, in the rujoo al aql fi hadal bab, mukhalif al aql. The fact that you are depending on your aql goes against the aql. And the people of philosophy affirm this themselves, which is they say, okay, there has to be, they come to a conclusion that there has to be a realm of the unseen which we don't understand. So they then said, eventually, the, the people of kalam and philosophy, they have said, if we believe in this world that there is this whole realm of the unseen, our aql cannot com- comprehend that. Therefore, this is the meaning of this principle here, which is, if you're depending on your aql to confirm and understand what is supposed to be unseen and has been kept unseen, you are going against your own aql in the first place. Because then it would be seen. But you're trying to use your aql in the scene to understand something which is from the unseen. Therefore, it's upon you to go back to the first one, which is to submit and to accept. And this is the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih. لِأَنَّ هَذَا الْبَابِ مِنُ الْأُمُورِ الْغَيْبِيَ The Shaykh explains, and this is exactly what we just said, this is from the affairs of the unseen. الَّتِي لَيْسَ لِلْعَقَلْ فِيهَا مَجَالِ Meaning, your aql and your senses and your trying to understand something, you will never get it. Until you actually see and move on from the life of this dunya, you will never get it. And this actually goes back to something which is really important, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in this dunya for the purpose of worship, for the purpose of submission. If a person is trying to understand things which are beyond that, then he's putting himself in a position which he has got no purpose for. And if he's going to try and do that, then it's never going to work. It's never going to work. A third, so a third response to the Mu'attila, which is now the first group, which is the Ashari, the Asha'ir and the Mashudi and the Kullabiya from before them. If you are now going to depend on your aql and not the naql, which is the text, then this is always going to be a conclusion which is going to end up you contradicting yourself. Why? فَإِنَّ لِكُلِّ وَاهِدٍ مِنْهُمْ عَقْلٍ يَرَى وَجُوبُ الرُّجُوءِ إِلَيْهِ كَمَا هُوَ الْوَاقِعِ فِي هَأُولَاءِ Basically what he is saying here is that your aql is going to be different to his aql and his aql is going to be different to his aql and the aql in this generation is going to be different to aql in a different generation. The aql of a person in the east might be different to the aql of the person in the west. What benchmark are you then going to use to understand the unseen? To understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his sifat? To understand the unseen? Here we're talking about names and attributes of Allah, the tawheed of Allah, but it applies to everything in the unseen. It applies to the malaika, applies to the, the books and how they came down, it applies to the rusul. Applies to Jannah and Jahannam, it applies to the Qabar, it applies to everything which is connected to the unseen, Yawm al Qiyamah. Because you have to remember these groups that we are talking about, not only did they deviate when it comes to the name and attributes of Allah, but they also deviated with other things when it comes to the unseen. Some of them they denied the Adam al Qabar, some of them even denied the Malaika. They said, Malaika don't exist. How can you have a being which is made out of Noor and it has all these wings, etc.? They say it defies the Aqal, it doesn't exist, it's not possible, it's not something that can be touched. Therefore, the Shaykh is saying here, as a principle to refute all of that, number one, it goes the way against the methodology of the Salaf, number two, it goes against the Aql itself, where the people of Aql have actually themselves said, that, well, our intellect and our knowledge is limited, and it comes to a point that there will be certain things that we will never actually ever understand. But then he is saying here that going back to the Aql, and making that your methodology 
الاختلاف والتناقض مستلزم الاختلاف والتناقض it's gonna cause differences so now your la ilaha illallah will be different to his la ilaha illallah why? because he says my la ilaha illallah according to my aql is gonna be different to his so what's the benchmark now? فتجد أهدهم يثبت ما ينفي الآخر you will find one person affirming what the other person negates and this would then cause uh, differentiation, splitting and contradiction in our aqidah which would then obviously cause differing and contradiction in our ummah and this is plain for us all to see and we've talked about this before when it comes to the aqidah of Hamawiyah and we've talked about this and we are currently studying Wasatiyah which is that these books were written, some of them at the back of fitting, at the back of the ummah uh, being disunited at the back of them being attacked by the enemy so the ulama wrote to Ibn Taymiyyah on more than one occasion asking him to explain to us what is the aqeel of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah so when we can understand what the Shaykh is saying here we can then understand the exact same predicament that we find ourselves today why is the ummah weak? why is the ummah differing? why can't we understand anything? in a unified manner it's because we have left the methodology of the Salaf unless if we go back to something which we all have the same criterion and benchmark on everyone's going to like the Shaykh is saying in this point here everyone's going to differ with one another and they're going to contradict one another because your methodology and your understanding and your criterion and benchmark for Islam is going to be different to somebody else's then there's never going to be any unity he's going to say let's go right he's going to say let's go left fourth way of uh, refuting or answering back to the Mu'attila the Shaykh says, you know, he says, الرابع, أنهم إذا صرفوا النصوص عن ظاهرها إلى معنى زعموا أن العقل يوجبه. They say that we have to make تأويل. Our aql tells us we have to make تأويل. فإنه يلزمهم في هذا المعنى نذير ما يلزمهم في المعنى الذي نفوا مع ارتكابهم تحريف الكتاب والسنة. Basically, what they're saying here is. If we've got an attribute which goes against the aql, we have to make that wheel of it in order for that text to be sound. Otherwise, this is what they're saying, because this is how it's the contradiction. So we're basically saying this is what you are saying, right? So when they are saying that we have to make that wheel, we have to make that wheel. So I'll give you an example. They say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot make istiwa. It's not possible that Allah makes istiwa. They completely negate this. And this is actually a very big deal for uh, the people of Ta'atil because this is one of the things they focus on a lot. Because they will say, you're limiting Allah, you're likening Allah, you are uh, you know, um, limiting Allah to a time, limiting Allah to a space, etc. You are saying that Allah has movement, you are saying Allah has actions, you are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hadith. And this is why you find from the time of the Salaf, Istiwa was always one of those things which, you know, that the ulama the salaf looked at primarily. Well, what's your position on this? What? Books were written on this as well. So let's look at this now here. The Shaykh is saying here that if the people of Ta'atil, meaning the Asha'i, etc., are saying that we must make Ta'wil in order for the Qur'an then to be sound, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Rahman al They say, this ayah, we cannot leave it the way it is because that would be wrong. Why? Ar-Rahman made istiwa of the arsh in what is apparent with which is the methodology of the salaf you are now limiting Allah to time you are now limiting Allah to space you are now likening Allah you are saying Allah has movements you are etc. Right? So what they are saying here is we have to make that wheel of this one because it goes against our aql <coughs> otherwise that would mean that there is a deficiency in the kitab and the sunnah so they're saying, they're saying it's wajib upon us to make this ta'wil in order to make sure that the kitab and sunnah remains pure. Can you see how bad that is? I was going to say evil, but you can see how bad that is. So what they're basically, what the shaykh is saying here, so what they're saying is then, is that the kitab and the sunnah is not self-explanatory in itself. That you have to come and purify it. You have to come and defend it in a way which that the salaf didn't, but you are saying that you are doing it in this way. But also, the Shaykh is saying here, in this is a contradiction themselves also because they say that we are fleeing from tahrif. But this is a form of tahrif itself. 
because the Asha'ir, the Kul Nabiya really, the main group here is the Kul Nabiya. The Asha'ir and the Matudiya of uh, a branch of what Abdullah bin Kullab came with. Because he was basically saying here, we need to stick to the Kitab and the Sunnah. We can't be like the Jahmiya. These guys are complete heretics. But at the same time, we have to use Aqal. So he's trying to, and this is why Ibn Taymiyyah wrote that book, Darq Ta'ar al-Bain al-Aql wa al-Naql. So what we're saying here is that you're trying to run away from tahrif, but you're falling in it yourself. And then there's another argument the Shaykh makes, which is, this is the khamis now. So now he gives examples from that one, but now this is the khamis. أَنَّ قَوْلِهِمْ فِي مَا نَفَوْهُ what they say about what they have negated, so they negate so many things for Allah. Remember, they've only affirmed seven. Everything else is negated. They say anything else beyond these seven. Now, this is why they are differed. The Matrudiya only came about because they differed with the Asha'ira. They said, no, we don't affirm the same number that you do. Some of the Asha'ira affirmed seven. Some of them got up to 14. Some of them got up to 20. So the Matrudiya didn't affirm that. So they ended up splitting off and creating a new one, uh, Abu Mansur Matrudi. And some of them ended up actually making takfir on one another. Why? It's because of this. In ithbatuhu yistilzim at If you were to affirm anything beyond these seven, or whatever the criteria is, whether it's 14 or 20, whatever it might be, anything beyond that, then you are likening Allah to the creation. So they have affirmed these seven. If you say that Allah made istiwa, you've likened him to the creation, right? So the Shaykh is saying here, you've negated everything. Because mamnul ishtiraq fi asma wa sifat. Because you're saying here, the face has to mean face. It's outside of the seven. Hand has to mean hand. The Shaykh is saying here, this is wrong. And the reason why it's wrong, and this is exactly what we said previously when it comes to the uh, mumathila, is that just because you've got a name for something, it doesn't mean it's exactly the same for something else, even though they've got the same names and the same sifat. لا يستلزم تماثل مسميات والموصفات كما تقرر سابقا Just like we have already established the Shaykh is saying here. Connected to that then, because we've already talked about this, so I don't think we need to repeat that. We did this last week anyway. Connected to that then, is that they end up, now look at this here, the Shaykh is saying, and this is what Ibn Taymiyyah is actually saying here. The seven that you've affirmed. So you say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hay, qadir, he has irada, he has sam, basr, he has kalam, he has ilm. You've affirmed these seven. How is the ilm of Allah? The Asha'ir say, oh, we don't know how the ilm of Allah is. We affirm it without asking kayf. Okay, how is the sam of Allah? How is the basr of Allah? How is the haya of Allah? These seven that you've affirmed for Allah, how is it? He said, we can't ask how. We just affirm. So the Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah is saying here, why can't you do that for the rest of them? This is precisely what we've been doing all this long, all this time. فَإِنْقَالُوا إِنَّنَا نُثْبِتْ هَذِي الصِّفَاتِ لِلَا تَعَالَى عَلَى وَجْهِ يَخْتَسُّ بِهِ وَلَا يُشَبِّ So now what they're saying here. These seven are specific for Allah and He has no resemblance in this. We say to them, هَذَا جَوَابْ حَسْنُ سَعْدِيدِ what you have said is right. These seven we affirm without asking how. Why don't you say that for all these other things that you have negated for Allah as well? Why don't you say that the same? Why don't you say that for His face? Why don't you say that for all these other things? Another thing now connected to this principle here in the way that the Shaykh is responding to the Asha'ira is that they only use the aql for negating. Because everything else beyond the aql would conclude in them resembling Allah to the creation. That in itself is wrong. So now they will use the aql to try and strip Allah from the names and attributes. That in itself is wrong because it goes against everything that we've just basically talked about. It's self-contradictory and it goes against the way of the Salaf al etc. Because what you are basically doing is you're using your aql to negate, 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 negate. And you will only use the kitab and the sunnah 
when it conforms with your aql to affirm. If you feel that it doesn't go in that manner, you will just completely, just completely negate it, even though it's there and it's clear. But then, this also causes problems. Number one, the Sheikh says, أَنَّهُ لَا يَسِحْ لِإِعْتِمَادِ الْعَقَلِ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ And this is similar to what we have just said before. How can you use your aql to negate? What's your benchmark? Have you seen Allah? Have you got knowledge of the unseen so that you can use the aql in this manner? Now this goes back to another issue which is not actually here. And this is actually, I think, is very important that we touch upon it, which is... And the reason why I think it's important is because a lot of people are doing it without realizing it, or they are, they are realizing it, Allah knows best. But a lot of people, especially when it comes to a new fitna, I mean, today it just seems like every other week there's a new fitna that's affecting the Ummah. For the last six, seven months we've seen so many different things, and now we're seeing things here in the UK. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what's happening next. But it's fitna which is not now on a personal level, it's on a communal level, it's affecting a lot of people. What happens now is people go back to their emotions or they go back to their desires or they go back to their aql as a mustar. This is the issue that we're saying here. Or what we mean by mustar here is that what is your form of legislation? Allah I saw a video somebody sent me. When I looked at it, I was shocked. And the person sent it to me as if they were praising this person. So you've got the racist guys on that side and they're hurling things. There's police there holding them back. A group of brothers come out dressed in all black, face covered, etc. One guy didn't have his face covered, long beard, dressed in all black. And he was speaking this foreign language and he's saying, we're going out for the sake of Allah. So he gets the rocks and they get the rocks from this side and they're now hurling it over, over the police and trying to hit those people. Where did you hide? Where did you hide? Wallahi ladheem, wallahi ladheem. There will never be a police ban once a person is doing jihad in the battlefield. It just won't exist. There will never be a police barrier and the person is calling this the battlefield. It just won't never exist. Wallahi ladheem, there will never be a person appointing himself as an imam in a land where he is Darul Ahd and says that I am the Amir for jihad now. It just doesn't exist. So now these people are now circulating and say, oh yeah, these people are fighting back, these people are doing this and these people are that. When what they should be doing is going back to the Kitab and Sunnah with understanding of Salih. If you don't have that, then you wait. Obviously you defend yourself, you know, so you become a coward, you defend yourself, but you go back to the people of ilm. And this is what the Shaykh is saying here, which is these people, they didn't know what to do when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah. So then they made i'timad. So they made i'timad and aql instead. They were lost, they were confused. So what did they do? They went to the aql. They went to the desires, they went to social media, they went to the emotions, they went to whatever else it may be. So this is why I think it's important for us to understand that it is not a masdar to use the aql. It is not a form of legislation. It is not a tool of legislation. It is not a source or a resource that we use our emotions or social media or this person's opinion or that person's opinion or, oh, that looks right, it must be good. It has to go back to the Sunnah and the standing of the Salaf. So the Shaykh is saying here, you can't use your aql in this. Come as sabaq, just like we have said before. And this is what we have been looking at for the previous few durus in establishing the principles, which is the methodology of the Salaf. The second thing the Shaykh says, أنه يمكن إثبات ما نفيتموه بدليل عقلي you are using your aql to negate. And sometimes you will use your aql to affirm. You can even use your aql to do the opposite of what you're doing. So a person will come and say, my aql says that Allah doesn't have a face now. My aql says that Allah didn't make his diwa because you're limiting Allah, etc. You can use your aql to counteract that. So the shaykh is saying here that, uh, what aql are you using? He's got a different aql to him. You are using kaif sometimes, like not making takif sometimes, and using aql sometimes. And then the Shaykh will give examples of that. Uh, and then he also says, connected to this, and this is the last bit here that he mentions before we move, talk about talk, before we move on to talk about it. Does he know? Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says, just because your aql cannot understand it, 
it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And we can understand that in the world that we live in today. If a person was to say to you like 20, 30 years ago that you know, you're know you going to have all these different technological advancements, you would think, oh, this is crazy, this is a bit far-fetched. Maybe in some kind of imaginary kind of concept. But for people actually living their lives like this, no, I can't imagine it like that. So the Sheikh is saying, just because your aql doesn't comprehend it, doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't exist. So again, depending on the aql is very dangerous. And using that as a mustard, as a form of legislation and a source, is very dangerous. So this is the first group that the Shaykh has talked about. Now the Shaykh moves on to talking about the Mu'tazila. Perhaps we should stop here. I don't know, what do you think? What do you think? You think? It's been about half an hour. What do you think? Should we carry on? Second group, the Mu'tazila. So now we're here, we've talked about the, mu- the Mu'attila. So now this all falls under the category of the Mu'attila. The reason why, we've got the Mu'attila, uh, Mu'shabbiha, on one side, who constantly are affirming. The Mu'attila are constantly negating. We've just looked at the first group here that the Shaykh has mentioned. This is the Asha'ira, really the Kulnabiya, where they have basically said, okay, we'll use the Aql sometimes, and then we'll use the Nakal sometimes. Now we've got the second group. This is the Mu'tazila. And those who followed them, وَمَنْ تَبَعُهُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِلَامِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكَلَامِ وَغَيْرِهِمْ And those who followed them from أَهْلِ الْكَلَامِ Such as the Jahmiyyah, etc. But the, the, the Mu'tazila are a little bit different. And the reason why the Shaykh is highlighting the Mu'tazila here, because وَتَرِيقَتُهُمْ أَنَّهُمْ يُثْبِتُونَ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَ أَسْمَاءَ دُونَ السِّفَاتِ وَيَجْعَلُونَ الْأَسْمَاءَ أَعْلَامًا مَحْضًا what they basically said is, the Mu'tazila, their way around doing all of this, they have said, okay, when it comes to the attributes, let's just leave that aside. But they've got a problem with the names as well as the attributes. The Asha'ira at least affirmed the names and they said, okay, the attributes. But the Mu'tazila, they said, completely forget the sifat. Even the names we've got a problem with. Allah is not Rahman, Allah is not Rahim, Allah is not Al Malik, Allah is not Al Qudus, Allah is not Al Salam. All of these names, they say, no, we can't. Reason why, they had said, number one, one that can't have multiple sifat. This is a, all of these are principles that they made up themselves, by the way. Okay, so we're just we're trying to tap in to the way they uh, are understanding it, right? So you've got this table here. Wallahi al mathal Allah is the highest example, but just give you an example. You've got this table here. How many attributes can you have? How many adjectives can you have for this table? So it's, I don't know, like a rectangular shape. It's brown, it's wooden, it's high, it's short, it's wide, it's old, it's expensive, it's cheap. What are these different things you can say to describe this table? Then what Tessila, they say, no, the table is the table. You can't have multiple attributes connected to the table. The table is the table. Right. If you now want to give this table some names, you can do that, but it's not part of the table. The table is only the table. If you want to call it, I don't know, a station, if you want to call it, I don't know, a desk, if you want to call it, those are all now separate. Essentially, it's still a table. So this is what they said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah is Allah. As for Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, these are all now names that we give to him of praise, of perfection, he is not Rahman, he is not Rahim, he is not Malik. These are all, as the Shaykh is saying here, وَيَجْعَلُونَ أَسْمَاءَ عَلَّامًا مَحْضَى They're just names. That's all it is. So yeah, he is a Rahman. Does he show Rahman? No. He is al Malik. Yes, he is al Malik. Is he the king? No. And this is well known, you probably heard this before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Qadir bila qudra, Al-Sami' bila sam, Al-Basir bila basar, Al-Alim bila ilm, etc. So Allah is Al-Alim, does he have ilm? No. Allah is Al-Basir, does he have uh, sight? No. Allah is Al-Sami' does he hear? No. So what they have said is we'll affirm these names for Allah but the attributes? No. This approach is very particular to the Mu'tazila. And this is why the Shaykh has put this here. Not to say others didn't, as the Shaykh is saying here, وَمَنْ تَبْعَمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكَلَامِ But these were the people who were there in the beginning that did it the most, I feel. 
that what they did is they got the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they said that these are just names for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as for attributes, no, we can't give them. How do we respond to this? Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given himself names and attributes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has confirmed these names for us and he has told us to worship him by them then what is it that you are saying? Where is your talil? Where is your salaf? فَإِنْ كَانَ إِثْبَاتُ الصِّفَاتِ يَسْتَلْزِمْ التَّشْبِيهِ فِي إِثْبَاتِ الْأَسْمَاءِ كَذَلِكَ So the first thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed it. Second thing is, if you are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the thing that you're, again, as we said before, the thing that you're running away from, you're going to fall into yourself. Okay. يَا هِوَ الْمُؤْتَزِلِي Allah is al-alim, but he doesn't have ilm. So now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have called him al-alim. This person here has got ilm. You have called him as samir This person has got sama. This person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-basir. This person has got sight. By the fact that you have called Allah that thing, if I'm going to call somebody else something similar, then you are, according to your own understanding, there's still tashabbuh bin al-khaliq wal makhluq you can't run away from it. Therefore, the whole approach and the whole premise is wrong. You could argue that, okay, he has got sight, but he is not al-basir, fair enough. But there are, there are things that you're going to have, that a person can be named, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be named, like that is also. Therefore, the shaykh says, tafriq بَيْنَ هَذَا وَهَذَا تَنَاقُدٌ Meaning, if a person was to say, Okay, Allah's got proper names, but He doesn't have these attributes. In order for us to uh, stay clear of likening Allah to the creation, then we will say that is wrong because you are still going to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names which are going to be similar to the way that you uh, give names to the creation. And then you will still fall into the same problem. A second way that we can respond to the Mu'tazila, and Allah ta'ala wasafa asma bi annaha husna. What does that mean? Husna. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these names. فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا So supplicate to him by these names. For what purpose? Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Irhimni. That's the meaning of this ayah. فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Ya Razak, Rizqni. Ya Ghafoor, Fili. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these names. And he is telling us to supplicate to him by these names. So he's got this name, but he's not got the attribute. That's what they're basically saying. So Allah, for example, is a razaq. So we say, Ya razaq. You call out to a razaq, but he doesn't have the ability to give you risk, according to them. So what's the point of the name? Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here, Fadu'uhu biha. Therefore, the shaykh is saying here, again, there is a tanaqud, there is a contradiction in the way that they've understood it, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given himself the name, so that we have the attribute, so that we worship him by it. Not that these names are just redundant and they're stagnant doing nothing. Had these names just been names, Also, the Sheikh says here, similar to the point that we mentioned before that, which is that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been given these names, and he doesn't have the attribute, and that is sufficient as praise, I can give him the same name, and he doesn't have the attribute, that would be me him praising, that would be me praising him. But none of us would accept that. For example, he's merciful, but he doesn't have the quality of being merciful. But I'll just call him that. According to the Mu'tazila, that's sufficient as praise. Whereas what we're saying here, no, that's not sufficient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the name, as well as the attribute. The Shaykh says also as a response, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anna Allah ta'ala athbata li nafsi sifat ijmalim wa tafseela. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us detail about his names and his attributes. What For what purpose? So that there will be no contradiction when it comes to the description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah rahim. 
excuse me, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, is basically saying here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained to us his names and his attributes in detail with uh, affirmation and negation so that we don't end up in contradiction and this confusion precisely what they have fallen into themselves. Rabi' as a fourth response to the Mu'tazila. If we are not going to give perfection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not correct for us then to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rabb or an Ilah. And this has the evidences in the Kitab and in the Sunnah as well. For example, the Shaykh gives us the example of Ibrahim. Ya Abati, he says to his father, who is worshipping idols, لِمَا تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبْسِرُ وَلَا يُنِي عَنْكِ شَيْعَ Why do you worship something that can't hear, and can't see, and can't benefit you in the slightest? This point the Shaykh is basically saying here is that when we affirm and negate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed and negated himself, it only gives us the conclusion of perfection. But if you're constantly negating, 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 and you've got nothing to add of completion, an affirmation, then there is no perfection. You just completely, just con- continuously, just continue to strip Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of those attributes. And there is no servitude left in that. Therefore, as a fourth benefit, is that we affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed for Himself and negate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has negated for Himself with the purpose of Al Kamal. Al Khamis from nine responses. أن كل موجود لا بد له من صفة. Everything that exists, like we were talking about the table before, everything that exists has attributes. Every that has a sifa. Now this is a principle with Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah, which is that when you have got a that, which is the essence, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and you have given him names and attributes, then we are talking about a description of Allah, not something which is separate. Whereas the Mu'tazila have separated the two. They have said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. The names are given to him. As for these attributes, they have been created separately. So the speech has been created and then that was then revealed. The rizq is separate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then that was then granted, etc. To the rest of the sifat. Whereas what we're saying is that that's not correct. These names... And these attributes are part of the description of his that subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a bit technical because what he is using is that he's using their own sort of like kalam against them. They are basically saying here, now this is what the atheists also have a problem with and some of them uh, refute one another in this. Some of the agnostics refute the atheists. They say basically there has to be a start off point. This is what the Shaykh is saying here Al Khaliq Al Wajib Al Wujud. Al Wajib Al Wujud. What's a Wajib Al Wujud? This thing has to exist in the beginning. Because if this thing doesn't exist, then there's nothing that's going to exist after that. Because nothing can't create nothing. Zero times zero is always going to be zero. If you've got nothing, nothing will be brought about. So they have said there has to be al-wajib al-wujud in the beginning. So the Shaykh is basically saying here, if you've got al-wajib al-wujud, then therefore that the khaliq, who is the wajib al-wujud, who is the one that is always there and has always been there and always been there, muttasifun bi sifat laiqa bihi. These names and attributes have to be there because all of those things that came about afterwards Rahma, Rizq, and uh, all these other things that we see are connected to the fact that there was a wajib al wujud in the first place. That makes sense? Hopefully, because it is quite complicated, but I'll try my best to summarize. As Sadis, Anna al Qawl, that their statement, be Anna Asma Allah, Alaman or Alaman Mahmud, Mutaradifa, like we talked about this before, Mutaradifa, Mutabayin. They say that these names are just names that are given to Allah. Uh, the Sheikh says here that this is قولن باطل This is a false statement And the reason why is because And again this is similar to what we've said before uh, With the other responses Which is that each word in the Kitab and the Sunnah Can have a meaning But its cave can be different كل 
كل اسم منها دالة على معنى المختص به all of these names that we give to Allah and these attributes are specific to him مع اتفاقها على مسمى واحد وموصوف واحد Allah is رحمة I have رحمة you have رحمة is the رحمة of Allah like the رحمة of yours and your رحمة is like mine we're saying no they're saying yes therefore Allah is a Rahman as for the characteristic of Rahman then that is not create that is created and is not part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore they're saying Rahman is one uh, Khalq is one all of these different attributes they're one but what we're saying here that's not right because we can see within ourselves that these attributes that we've got within ourselves differ from one another. Therefore, how can you say that it's the same when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But they're saying it is. That's another issue that the Shaykh is bringing up. as And now, this is an important benefit when it comes to Aqidah, but also when it comes to the Kitab and Tafsir, etc. They say that we take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't give it its apparent meaning. So he is a Sami' but bila sam and a Basir bila Basar. He is all hearing but he doesn't hear. He is all seeing but he doesn't see. He is all knowing but he doesn't have knowledge. The Shaykh says, now why is this important when it comes to the Arabic language and tafsir? The Shaykh says here, Qawlun Batil, this is also false. Mukhtalif al Muqtada Lisan al Arabi wa Ghail al Arabi. The Shaykh says this goes against the principles in the Arabic language and this is what I was saying is connected to tafsir. But the Shaykh is also saying this goes against the any kind of language. And I think we find this in the English as well. Which is, if a person tells you something, you go with what is clear and apparent. What time is it right now? 6 o'clock, 6.29. You can't say, oh, well, maybe it's about 7. No, I just said it's 6.29. This is what it is that the Shaykh is saying here. Which is that, what you do is you go with what is zahir. This is what you find in the Arabic language. And then the Shaykh goes on to explain that a bit more. In the sense that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he is a alim, you can't say that he is a alim without ilm. He said he's got ilm and he is an alim. Therefore he has the name and he's got the attribute. So we go with what is apparent. It's what he said. How can you change it? A thamin, uh, the eighth one, that they say that the that is different to the sifa. Table is different to the fact that we are giving it all these different attributes. We will say that this is wrong because the sifa is connected to the that. And just because the sifa is connected to the that, it doesn't necessarily mean that the body is going to be the same. So, go back to our table. How many legs is this table got? We can easily say that this table's got two legs, some tables have four legs, some tables have six legs. Right. If I say this table's got two legs, is it the same as Jubay's two legs? Describe for me Jubay, he's got two legs. Describe for me this table's got two legs. The Shaykh is basically saying here that we have to, they say, we have to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attributes separate. The reason why is because the attributes do not describe Allah. If we were going to say that the attributes describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would then necessarily that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's body would have the same description as even the table, if you like. Because the table's got a face, if you like. But we will say that that is wrong because of the fact, again, connected to the principles that we have mentioned. But how far you have run ahead with this? They say here that he still zim al jism. It necessitates that he then becomes like a body or something which is created, which is completely incorrect and far-fetched. A tasir in a response to the Mu'tazila, that they say that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then is likened to a body, that then means that you are the mumathila. Somebody sent me a message yesterday, I can't remember. It was something similar to this. He goes, I heard it in a lecture that he said, yeah, it was the statement of the Mu'tazila, but it wasn't on this. He said in a, he had in a lecture in a masjid, in the English language. And he said, I'm not sure about the speaker. But this is just to give you an idea that the idea is still here, still prevalent. This person said that the Qadr of Allah is descriptive, not prescriptive. Do you get that? 
that the qadr of Allah is just a general description how you're going to live. But it doesn't mean that's going to happen to you that way. Yeah? You get what I'm saying? The description of Allah, the qadr of Allah is descriptive, not prescriptive. So alhamdulillah, the brother, he picked up, he was like, I'm not sure about it. So he came to me, I thought, this is the statement of Mu'tazila. Tamaman. What do they say? The Mu'tazila, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, some of them completely deny qadr for Allah. Some of them say, no, Allah has a qadr, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be this way in the way that he wrote it. So he said, you're going to live for 80 years. Right? Say that's what's been written, may Allah give you a, a life upon khair. They say the Mu'tazila, it's been written in Lohan Mahfur that you're going to live for 80 years. But it might not be 80 years. This is what they say. Ahl Sunnah say, Na'udhu Billah. This is connected to the aim of Allah and the decree of Allah. All of this is part of our Iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written it and He knows it and He willed it and He created it. They say, no, it's descriptive, not prescriptive. Maybe it will change, maybe it won't change, maybe it will be like this, maybe it will be like that. This is similar to what we've got here. They say that if you affirm according to the way of the method of the Salaf, that you then become the mumathila. Why? Because you have said that Allah's got a face. In a way that the mumathila do. So they will then end up calling you the mumathila. This is Zahir al-Butlan. The Shaykh said this is clear in its falsehood. Because of the fact This is because of the fact of all these different things that we've just mentioned before. But the, the Shaykh is saying here, what we are saying doesn't necessitate a jism. We do not affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has affirmed for himself. And when we affirm for him, we are saying that it is not like the creation. So the Shaykh is saying here, Ibn Taymiyyah, They say that we are the mumathila and that what we say um, necessitates resemblance and imitation to Allah is a complete erroneous and false statement. I think we'll stop here because there's two more groups inshallah we'll talk about them next week the Sheikh talks about the Jahmiyyah and the Karamita so now here again in the Muslim Ummah today the Karamita are similar to the Bataniyyah who have pretty much the same aqeedah as the people of the Shia and the Rawafid in Iran. Which is they believe that when it comes to the names and attributes, when it comes to the Qur'an in general and the hadith in general, is that there are hidden meanings. So Allah is a Rahman. Yeah, but what does that actually mean? Oh, there's a hidden meaning to it. It doesn't mean it the way that you mean it. So now we've just looked at one group and how they de- deviated. Za'igun. Then we looked at the, another group who said, yeah, we affirm the name, but we don't affirm the attribute. Again, that is Zayq. Here we have another type of Zayq, which is hidden meanings. You've got what is all right for yourself, but there is something which is far greater, and you can only get that when you get closer to the Ayatollah, when you get closer to the Imams, etc. So this is what the Gullat al-Jahmiyyah, the Shaykh is saying here, the extreme Jahmiyyah fell into, and the Quran and the Bataniya. And then the Shaykh, so that's another group, and then the Shaykh talks about the Gullat al falasifa and that's when it gets a little bit more technical and a little bit more interesting because the Sheikh starts using philosophy against them, which um, we might need to summarize, but we'll try our best, inshallah. Those are the other two groups that the Sheikh mentioned, and then he moves on uh, to talking about a different chapter. So perhaps we look at that the week after. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps us firm upon the way of Ahl Sunnah one Jama'ah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he preserves our ulama and he has mercy on those who have gone. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps us upon the sirat al mustaqim until we meet him. I know. Allahu a'ala wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ah. Thank you. 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 Thank you where they say that every essence does not have a sifa. They say that the sifa, which is the attribute, is separate from the essence. But we're saying, no, that's not correct. Especially at the fact that the Shaykh says here, The first, the thing that's always been there. He's al awwal he's al-akhir. So if he's al awwal and al-akhir, and he's got these names, 
but he's got no attributes. How is it possible for the mumkin wujud to come about? Do you get what I'm saying? Me and you are mumkin wujud. Perhaps we exist, perhaps we don't exist. If you existed, it doesn't change anything. If I didn't exist, it wouldn't change anything. Right? We are known as the mumkin wujud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al wajib al wujud. He has always existed and he will always continue to exist. That has to be there. As for the details within the creation, Allah can create it this way, Allah can create it that way. It's entirely up to Him, subhanahu. So now what the Shaykh is saying here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wajib al wujud. He's always been there and He'll continue to be there. He's got names. This is what they're saying. That's it. There's no attributes. So if He's got names, but He's got no attributes, He's got no actions, where does the mumkin al wujud come about? But what we're saying here, He has always existed. He's always been Al-Khaliq, he's always been Al-Ghafur, he's always been Rahman, etc. But because of the fact that he is Al-Khaliq, he had the attribute of creating. Then the Mumkin and Wujud came about. That's the point that he's making. That's what we're saying, yes. So we're saying that the that has to be part of the Sifa. Well, they're saying that the that and the name is there, that's it. But there's no attribute to it. So then how is the Mumkin and Wujud going to come out if he's not going to create? It's pretty deep, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's a very good question. Uh, perhaps we'll talk about this um, as we go along. But takfir can only be pronounced upon a person when his kufr is clear upon him. If a person has uh, shubuhat or if he has ta'wilat, so if you speak to a Mu'tazili or uh, an Ashari and he will say, yeah, this is what I believe in because Allah said, because the Prophet said, and this is what they will do. So then we will say that that is now an uzr and an excuse or preventative for a person to be then made to fear upon that person. But there is no doubt what they're upon is a kufr, is clear kufr, because it's going against the kitab and the sunnah. However, what prevents that kufr being labeled upon them is the fact that they've got to read that. They've got these misconceptions. So that actually shows you the balanced nature of Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah and how they try and accuse us of being. Uh, you know, extreme, etc. It's not correct. Yes, ma'am. So you know how you said that some groups separate the attributes from Allah? The Mu'tazila, yeah. yeah. Would you say that that would be like a stepping stone for poly- polytheism? This is exactly what it is. And this is how the Jahmiya fell into what they fell into also. The Mu'tazila, they ended up making a differentiation between the names and attributes is because from the people of Kalam is that they tried to attack Muslims by saying, you believe in multiple gods as well. Allah is one, or Rahman is another, or Rahim is another, or Malik is another, or Quddus is another. So they have said that you believe in multiple gods. So the Jahmiyyah, they ended up saying, look, we're just going to make that deal of it all. That's one of the reasons why they ended up doing what they did. To the point that Jahmiyyah Safwan, he goes, I became so confused, I stopped praying for 40 days. I left Islam for 40 days, I was that confused. I came back into Islam, Fajr in the morning, and I said, I've got an answer. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammad abdu wa rasulah. I only affirm that Allah is Allah, that's it. Everything else I make that deal of. That's the way I go around with the way that they have tried to attack us with. And Mu'tazila, they say, no, 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 what we'll do is we'll call Allah Allah, we'll call Allah Rahman, Rahim, etc. But what we will do is we'll differentiate from Him, from those attributes. Those attributes come as a decree from him, but they are not attributes from himself. That's what they say. And they then say is that the reason why we're doing that is obviously our perfection and completion for him. This is what they would all say. But one of the reasons why they say that is because exactly what you just said. Because they say that if you have a deity that has all of these names and have all of these attributes, it can only mean that he has, uh, you are, you are going to have more than one deity in that because it's not possible. This is what they say. And the reason why it's going back to that point there, which is they say that that is separate from the sifa. So if you've got that and you've got all these different sifat, that means you've got all these multiple gods doing something. So they say, no, we have to negate that for Allah. Would you say that this is Of course, and there's no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. So, okay, so then, how, so okay, so now, the, the brother's asking here. Then, uh, clearly, these people have deviated. Then, what's the advice for us to make sure that we don't deviate? Number one, to ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to help you and assist you. Iyakin abudu, iyakin istain. It's one of the pillars of our salah. It's one of the pillars of Surah Al-Fatiha. 
You cannot establish any kind of goodness unless if you've got assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot guide yourself. Allah is al-Hadi. This is from his names and his attributes. So any kind of goodness you have is from Allah. So the first thing is you need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is that you need to make sure that you're sincere in him subhanahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to those who are sincere that which he doesn't give to those people who are not sincere. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ In the context of how the Ahlul Kitab deviated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to be sincere, but they weren't sincere. So then what happened? لَمْ يَكُنْ لَذِينَ كَفْرُمْ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُفِكِينَ حَتَّى تَأْتِهِمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ They didn't end up differing until after the bayina came to them. Why did the, the bayina came to them? The Kitab, some of them said, the Messenger, so we said them, that's the bayina. But then when they saw the bayina they differed. Surely when you see the bayana, you should unite. But they differed. Why? So the person is not sincere, they'll never be guided. The third thing is ilm. And this is my advice as well. Is ilm al-nafi' wa amal al-salih. Huwa al-lazhi arsal rasoolahu bil huda wa deen al-haq. The ulama have said, huda is ilm al-nafi' wa deen al-haq is acting upon it. The person has, asking Allah, he has ikhlas. He's seeking ilm and he is doing actions based upon that ilm. Inshallah, that person will be upon the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Therefore, a lot of people give emphasis to actions rather than ilm and the focus on ikhlas and purification internally, etc. I think all four of these have to be balanced on a regular basis upon, uh, for that person, for him to stay upon the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. If you don't get the balance right, then you could either have too much hope or you can have too much fear or you can have too much action without ilm or you can have too much ilm without action. And that in itself is dangerous. If a person's got all of these four, all of them are praiseworthy characteristics, but if they're not balanced, then you can see that can lead to deviation as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's tricky. It's tricky. Wallah, the dunya is fitna. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his assistance. Barakallah fikum, inshallah. See you guys next week. Subhanahu wa ta'ala.